past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now, before I do begin, I do want to do, or at least say something, about these series. If you guys are looking at the name to them, they're called Kiru Show Mini Shots. Thanks to Rulies01, I believe, I'll be calling these that. Now, he, I know he's been viewing this channel for a long time. I do have to say that that's actually a very clever name. I probably actually would not have thought of it myself. Now, with that being said, the effects of this particular universe, another DC Deku. Now, we're not going to be starting small. So this is a mini shot, and I know you guys like the action pack series, Let's just talk about why this universe would come into existence. Now, the Flash. Fucking with time travel. Sounds about right. Now, because of this, somebody in the past, they got a strange feeling. A military commander, he just knew. Something in his mind told him he needed to send his son away. He knew that if you get a feeling in your gut like this one, the one that kind of turns your stomach to knots, you listen to it. You don't ignore it. Now, he looks into it, and he finds that his planet will be destroyed. And the decision is made by him and his wife. Their infant son would take a space pod, and he would fly away. They would send their baby boy to a place to be safe. Now, the baby, originally, he would just be sent into deep space. The idea of him being preserved in stasis until being found was enough for them. It could be eons later. He could be stuck there to the end of time. It could just be a few days, a few weeks, a few years. As long as their baby boy stayed alive somehow, they had faith. Now, that's where Deku would be in the main timeline, before Flashpoint. And you do have after Flashpoint. The space pod, it got sent a bit careening off course. Thanks to the gravity fluctuation, it basically did take the same path as a few meteorites. Except, these ones, yeah. After getting flung into the Phantom Zone, you do actually have years later, where the space pod, it does reopen and fly into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, because of this, Superman, he was actually very skeptical. The day this happened was unexpected. Strange events were already occurring, and no one could explain any of them. It just seemed so weird, so strange. Trying to understand anything here today, it's impossible. Now, with that being said, Deku's space pod would crash land in America, as it actually was picked up by Amanda Waller. And she had a lot of plans. The fact that this pod that they are looking at does actually match some files Batman has had on Superman, Amanda, she's very keen to pick up on this. And you do actually have Izuku. Over the course of his life, he's been trained for one sole purpose. If the day ever does come down to it, he will kill the Justice League. He is the only contingency they have for Superman. And because of this, Deku, he's trained in much, much more things than Superman could ever specialize in. Now, Deku, he is trained under the red sunlights they would use against Superman. 
and he's even been exposed to different kryptonites. They want to see certain effects, however they do leave the more violent ones alone. Now, it's very weird and strange to them. They're basically raising a Kryptonian assassin. And for the eventual day, Superman would either snap or he would be needed. There were close calls here and there. However, there were none unlike today. The day where Deku, he was around the age of 17. And Amanda, she actually was a lot less cold than before. She didn't really view Deku as a project anymore, or just something to watch through a cage. In her own strange way, she's grown a bit of an attachment. She's not the nurturing, hey, I'm going to give you a hug because you seem down. She's more like the, oh, I will actually cry at his funeral, instead of just staring at the coffin. Now, that's kind of Amanda Waller. What do you expect? Now, with that out of the way... You do actually have where Superman, he was going through his daily life. And today he told Lois that he was Superman. As he did actually get a call. Apparently there was reports of a strange monster. It just tore apart the Justice League. The only one left standing, it's Wonder Woman. And even then, she's being torn apart. The King of Atlantis has already been taken down. He tried holding it off as long as possible, but he was just torn apart. Now, Superman does go flying in, and Amanda, she actually is someone on edge. If somebody can take down the King of Atlantis and contend with an Amazon, they won't actually be very easy to defeat. Now, you actually have Deku, who, as this is all going on, he is just staying there. As they're outside, in Deku, he is waiting. He's waiting for the word. Whenever he gets told to, he can turn around and fly straight to the battlefield in Metropolis. At full speed. It will only just take probably not even a few seconds. He'll probably be there within an instant. Now, Amanda, she is still cautious. Batman has no idea of this boy. And neither does Superman. The fact that he's even really here shows exactly what type of fate has brought to him. Has brought them. Now, there is actually where Amanda, she's very surprised watching a few things. This large-scale creature, it does start to contend with Superman. Blow for blow, they're going back and forth. And even Superman, he actually does get pushed back by it. This large thing does end up flying through many walls. And the moment it does get to chase him down, Superman already got back up, and I mean he was able to sucker punch him directly in the face, and actually knock out a few teeth, before actually going to punch upwards into his gut as he does go to spit up blood. Superman just trying to fight it over and over, punching down as hard as he can as a large crater does form. Now, Amanda, she does find it to be quite surprising, and very confusing. The fact that something is out there right now that can contend with him, the Man of Steel. It does actually open up her mind to more things, more possibilities about everything. Their biggest worry was Superman. But what the fuck is that thing? If that thing's able to contend with Superman, it's practically doomsday. Now, you do actually have where Deku, he does watch the battle. And he's actually seeing something that is actually kind of concerning. This thing in Superman, these two are about dead even. Along with that, he just fired heat vision and Superman blasting him through a wall. The man walked out of the rubble and he just was bleeding. He's never seen this guy bleed. If they're really that close in power to each other, then what can he do? Now, Deku here really does understand his lineage. From what he understands, he is the last son of Zod. He himself is like Superman. He is Kal-El, of the House of El, while he is of the House of Zod. The two, they are, from what he understands from Amanda Waller, opposing factions. However, right now, that does not matter. 
This is important. The world is at stake here. Now, you do actually have where Doomsday, he does get a hold of Superman. And he does actually go to grab him by his face, as he's going to smash him into the ground and actually go to try and wrap the cape around his head. As both the two, they do continue their battle. Superman firing off intense amounts of heat vision, as he actually is going to bring his hand up and try to sweep Doomsday's leg upwards. Doomsday actually going to fall, as Superman, he actually is going to throw up his leg and kick him as hard as he can. Setting him high up into the air, as he is going to fly backwards and try to smash upwards into his back. Now, whenever he does do that, Sup Superman, he does continue to try and fly. Him trying to send a fury of punches into Doomsday and trying to at least do anything. Doomsday, as Superman is flying around, being able to grab him out of the air, and directly going to try and get him underneath him. Before Doomsday does start socking him across the face over and over and over again. The two smashing into a building as it does start to collapse. Now, Deku was trying to hold it for as long as he could, but he couldn't do that anymore. Him actually going to turn and walk away as this quickly just leave. By the time Amanda did actually go to turn her head to think, Deku was already gone from his post, and a gust of wind filled his place. As she would just go back to turning towards the monitor. The person asking if they really should just let him run free like that. Right now, there's none of our concern. That thing is... If that thing kills Superman, what makes you think he, the boy can handle it? Miss Waller, you are aware of exactly what you are doing, correct? I am well aware. However, this will also be good for the public's eye. If it is known that we ourselves were able to help take down this threat then maybe people will start to trust us more, put more faith in the people and the government instead of superheroes. Now, do you agree with this statement? I do, Miss Waller, but... But what? That is all that is to be said. Now, Amanda, she actually is trying to hide her nerves. She's somewhat scared. She has faith that the boy, he is well trained, but it's executing it in an actual fight. The boy has never unleashed his full power before against an opponent. And this will be his first real combat experience. Training that's different. This is the real thing. Now, you do actually have Superman. As he was getting pummeled into the ground, and Doomsday, he actually was getting ready. Going to bring his hands up to try and attack Superman once more. Before, all of a sudden, something does come rocketing in and smashing right into Doomsday's chest. As Deku does go to pick up Doomsday and fly directly upwards, smashing into a clock tower. Now, Superman was caught quite off guard. As for a split second, whenever he did look up towards Doomsday, he saw a face. And then it disappeared. Now, he actually does go to try and get back up onto his feet. His cape has been torn off. Most of his clothing, it does seem to be heavily damaged. And there actually is where he does try to follow the sounds of explosions and even the carnage going on. Deku got flung into a building after Doomsday got a hold of him. And Deku himself actually tried to swing Doomsday into a building. And even see what he could do. Now, you do actually have where Deku, he actually has got to try and walk over and pick up a fairly large truck. Chucking it right at Doomsday, as he is going to actually use his heat vision to blast it off. Now, Doomsday, he actually does grab the truck out of the air. As Deku, the moment his heat vision does blast off, he strikes the engine and the thing does explode. As Doomsday, he actually is trying to gain his composure and see through the explosion, Superman basically does come flying down towards Deku. Deku turning his head and looking at the man. As he does see the young boy. A black and red suit. And no cape. Exactly. Who are you? That symbol. General Saad? I'm... Listen, that's not important right now. Listen, this thing here. It's dangerous. We need to work together. You're Kryptonian, aren't you? Yes, I am. That's not important right now. Seems pretty important if you're here. You know what this is? Not a chance. Not a clue. Do you think we can beat it? 
Well, it's a 2v1, and we're both similar in strength, I think. You think? I don't know. Anyways, we need to hurry now. Now, Deku just rush in, as so does Superman. Superman, he went straight forwards as Deku actually had come around the left. I'm actually flying straight through the wall of a building before actually curving at a certain angle. As Superman did actually rush forwards towards Doomsday, Doomsday did get to throw a right hook. And Deku, he immediately did fly straight through the wall right into Doomsday's arm. Deku actually smashed her into the arm and going to turn as Doomsday his head and actually does somewhat turn. And Superman, he just punch him right there in the neck. Now. Deku, once Superman does do that, they do send Doomsday flying. And there actually is where Deku, him and Superman, they do fly after the menace. As many people, they are actually commenting on the other Superman. It's gotta be insane. That can't be true, right? It's not possible. There's only one of them, isn't there? Now, the rest of the Justice League, they're trying to get back on their feet. From what they've just heard from Batman, apparently there's another Kryptonian. And you do actually have on the news right now, where it could be seen as shockwaves and ripple effects that do send choppers flying and blasting around through the pure wind pressure. As you do actually have outside of Metropolis, where a large mountain does start to collapse and the earth does start to shake. As we actually do cut over to Deku and Kal-El, both of these two are flying at intense speeds, and they're practically trying to play volleyball with this unstoppable force. The two are currently spinning around and flying in a circle, creating a giant tornado that Doomsday, he can't grab a hold of anything. Anytime he does try to grab a hold of one of these two Kryptonians, the other one comes right in and smashes the him as hard as possible, only for him to not only get sent off balance or even away from the Kryptonian, they're still able to maintain this constant force of speed. And even then, they try to smash him into the ground to handle him as much as possible. And Kalel, he's actually quite happy and pleased. Deku does take on a good amount of damage. And actually, whenever he does fly right by Doomsday, Doomsday does go to grab him by his foot. Before immediately going to turn and swing him, he does smash him right into Superman, before actually going to fly down towards the ground. As he does smash Deku to the ground as hard as possible, Deku he actually does cough up quite a bit of blood as his body does bounce. Doomsday punching down into the boy's gut before actually going to pick him up. And attempting to try to rip apart the guy by force. Him grabbing a hold of Deku's left arm as he does try to start pulling. Now, the moment that actually does happen, Deku does start to scream out before looking right at Doomsday and actually going to blow out a gust of breath. Now, Deku, he does actually cover Doomsday's face as the entire head is start to cover in ice, and Deku doesn't need to go to cock back his hand and punch it forwards. Now, Deku, he was actually able to destroy Doomsday's eyes temporarily. Doomsday letting go of Deku is just going to try and bring up his hands to rip off the ice. Before Deku, he actually does go look towards Superman. And there actually is a few ideas that are posed. Superman suggests the idea of... Deku actually just trying to hold Doomsday. Well, he does try to go in for an attack that might end it. Now, Deku here does try to advise against this. They can both go in for a double attack and send him flying. They can't really think. And, as Deku is trying to at least explain what's going on, Superman does go rushing and flying forwards. This thing, he has to use his full power. Faster than he's ever moved before, stronger than he's ever hit anything before. If he doesn't take this thing out now, it's going to get stronger. And it's going to start killing people. Now, you do actually have where Deku, whenever he does see Superman fly off, he does try to move forwards himself. And Superman, he's just so much faster than Deku. It's got to be the years of experience, the decade Superman has on him. Shit, no, too slow, too slow. Now, Deku, whenever Superman does actually smash right into Doomsday, he does see the Fist of Doomsday come up with a giant bone spike. Him stabbing right into Superman as Deku himself did try to come in and smash Doomsday in the neck. Now, Doomsday, he actually got to bring up his left hand, 
holding right on the Kalel as the spike is going to his body. And as soon as Deku did go to smash him, Doomsday, he got flung backwards. And the two's bodies, they smash into the ground and start rolling. Kalel being sent flying as Deku himself, he's trying to get the hang of his maximum speed. Now, Deku, after getting up off the ground, he does go to try and find the monster. Whenever he does find it, he does see its body. Okay, this is not good. Okay. Now, Deku does start to notice something. One of its fingers does start to twitch. And Deku, after looking down at it, he's horrified. He can hear a heartbeat starting again. I'm actually going to reach down and Deku go to grab down at Doomsday before rocketing upwards into the sky with a sonic boom. Now, Deku, he does return a few minutes later after chucking Doomsday into deep space. As he does find somebody holding Superman. Deku actually going to walk forwards and try to ask exactly if that lady knows him. Now, she actually does turn her head to look directly at Deku. As she does explain who she is, and she does actually try to ridicule Deku. Why didn't he help the Justice League sooner? Why wasn't he ever here? kal thought he was the last one alive. Now, Deku, he actually does feel somewhat bad. However, before he can o even open his mouth to explain, a man of all to step in, trying to make light of the situation and talk to Miss Lane. Now, with that being said, a funeral service is held, and we do currently have at the White House, where after a ceremony for Superman was held, there was actually people curious about this other Kryptonian or this other Superman. And Deku did actually step up to a podium to explain himself. As he does stand there. With the man, the symbol of hope. Superman. Gone. Everyone they need someone to look forward to. And Deku, he always thought of it in a weird way. He was always told he was going to kill Superman. Never replace him. He knows that there are big shoes to fill here. And he does should at least open up with some, at least, few words he believes that the man would say himself. As he's going to bend down towards the microphone and start his speech. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part. Or I'll catch you guys if this does become a series.